G'day guys, welcome back once again to the Australian Reptile Park and our live stream videos. My name's Dan, I've got a few of my guys backing me up today because in a few minutes we're going to meet the largest snake that we have at the Australian Reptile Park, Monster, our giant but amazing reticulated python. Now keep up with our videos every single day, Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner are great educational videos which you can check out every day at 10am so make sure you watch those and we'll have plenty more live streams coming out throughout the rest of the week. Tomorrow, Jake Meany, one of our reptile keepers, will once again be jumping inside Elvis's enclosure and feeding uh, Elvis our big giant saltwater crocodile. Now, what we thought we'd do is introduce you now to Monster. Now, Monster is a massive snake, and generally, when you're working with snakes this large, you have to remember that they're extremely powerful. Now, working when you're working with a highly venomous snake, like a taipan or an eastern brown snake, you already know that those snakes are potentially quite dangerous because obviously, they're venomous. This particular animal isn't like that. They don't kill using fangs and venom. They do it very differently. They use their teeth to hold on to prey. They use their extremely strong muscles. They're constrictor predators. They'll wrap around, they'll start to squeeze. What they'll do is stop the blood flow to the major organs, killing that animal, and that's how they do it. Which, if you're working with a snake as large as this, that's what they could potentially do to you. Thankfully though, Monster has an amazing temperament. And isn't this one of the most beautiful snakes you'll ever see? So being a reticulated python, right now we're looking at the longest snake species found on the planet. Now here in Australia, we do have some pretty big snakes. Our two largest species is your scrub python, which is found in northern Queensland, and your olive python. Now a really big scrub python might get to around six meters long. That's about maximum. Same for the olive python, particularly the ones found in Western Australia. But that's nothing on a reticulated python. There's no reason why a reticulated python, once it reaches maybe 30 or 40 years of age, could potentially get to eight or nine meters long. Another big difference between these snakes and our snakes that we have here in Australia is the weight. A really heavy snake species in Australia, like a scrub python, you're talking maybe 20 kilograms. This particular snake species can get to around 150 kilograms. Absolutely massive. Now, that doesn't make them the heaviest snake species on the planet, though. The heaviest snake species on the planet would be your green anaconda. That's a snake that can get to over 250 kilograms, but that species is found in South America. Now, reticulated pythons, not gonna find them here in Australia. In Southeast Asia is where you might come across a big, beautiful snake like this. But there's another really large species of python that lives in that part of the world called the Burmese python. And between the reticulated python, the green anaconda, and the Burmese python, now we're talking about what is probably the three largest snake species on the planet. Now here in Australia, we're blessed when it comes to our snake diversity, particularly our front fang venomous snakes. We have over 170 snake species in total, and of those, 103 are front fang venomous snakes. Now, some of our snakes are quite dangerous, in turn, potentially dangerous, because they are highly venomous. Around 10% to 15% of our front fang venomous snakes can potentially cause harm to a human through a bite. But thankfully, in Australia, we have a very low account of snake bite death, and that's because of the amazing work that we do at the reptile park, milking those snakes for the production of antivenom. But in saying that, this is a constrictor predator. Now, what we usually feed monster is a goat. And not just any little tiny goat, I'm talking about a goat that might weigh four or five kilograms. For a big snake like this, they wanna have one really large feed, and then the snake won't have to eat for maybe a month, two months, even potentially three months. In fact, I could probably not feed Monster now for around six months, and her body condition wouldn't ch change too much at all. So for a big, heavy body python like we're looking at right now, one really large meal might sustain them for a very, very long period of time. So as I said, here at the park, we usually feed monster large chickens or occasionally we'll feed them feral pig or goat. But that is how we feed our big retics. Different when we're working with one of our front fang venomous snakes like an eastern brown snake, we'll feed them far more regularly. Their metabolism move goes a lot faster, they move around a lot more, so again, we'll feed them more regularly than what we'd feed a snake like this. But how does Monster track down its prey? Now, if you get that camera nice and close, and look at that forked tongue, it's gonna to stick out every few seconds. Now, yesterday, we were talking about our varanids, our monitor species, and what they share in common with this snake is that forked tongue. 
They use that fork tongue, they stick it out, they pick up little scent particles, and you can see the idea of the fork to give them a sense of direction. If they can smell the prey item more on the right side of the tongue fork, they're gonna head that way. On the left side, they're gonna head that way. So they follow that tongue, picking up little scent particles. They're literally tracking that prey item down. Once they get close enough, they're gonna strike out grab that animal and start to squeeze. And you're talking about an animal, once they're past 20 or 30 kilograms, they are so strong, you really can't explain it uh, until you've had one wrapped around you. But a snake this size, that weighs 55 and a half kilos, sorry, 62 and a half kilos, potentially quite dangerous. In fact, if this snake grabbed you and you were by yourself and you had no one to get it off you, there's a very good chance in a couple of minutes this snake could kill you. That's why we always have lots of keepers when we're working with our big giant snakes. But as I said before, Monster has one of the best temperaments for a reticulator python I've ever seen. Now, what we're gonna do is show you how big Monster is uh, by using one of our tallest keepers, Brandon. So we're going to get Brandon for a bit of perspective to lay next to Monster to show you exactly how big she is. Now Brandon, he's probably 1.65 metres tall. That's about it. Yeah, that's it. And probably about 500 centimetres round. But you can <laughs> see right now how long the snake is. It's almost three Brandons if you look at it from start to finish. So a lot of people say also too when you're working with snakes is that a snake will go up to next to the prey item to measure it up to see if it can eat it. Uh, you can see Monster's not trying to do that at all. In fact, Monster's trying to head off in the other direction. It's not associating with Bra associating Brandon with food at all. It simply wants to move. The moment Brandon gave a little touch, the snake started to move off away from Brandon. But that gives you a little bit of perspective between a person and a really large snake. But just think, Monster weighs 60 something kilos, 62 kilos. She's five and a half meters long. This particular animal could get to eight and a half, maybe nine meters long and be three times as heavy. Imagine coming across a big, beautiful snake like that. Unfortunately, because these snakes are so pretty, it's a beautiful snake. We're looking at one of the most beautiful, attractive snake species on the planet. These animals are killed uh, for, this, for, the, for the skin trade. It's really sad to think that anyone would harm an animal that is as beautiful as this, but it still uh, does happen. It's not a major issue here in Australia. It doesn't really happen. But in other parts of the world, particularly Asia and Africa, it is a massive problem. We don't want to see these animals on a belt or anything like that. We want to see them healthy and living out uh, in the wild. Now, if you get that camera there, look at the muscles contracting. Those really powerful belly scale muscles, the belly muscles drawing those ventral scales forward against the bottom of the sur against top of the surface there, the grass, and pulling that body forward. Now this snake isn't moving very quickly. It's too big to do that. The fastest snake on the world is the black mamba from South Africa. It can get up to around 13, 14 kilometers top speed. So that's a pretty good reminder that even the fastest snake species on the planet, most people could out jog that. So snakes aren't really gonna bother to chase you or anything like particularly uh, a snake like this. But even our faster moving snake species, they don't really wanna chase you. In fact, they always uh, want to avoid you. That's the thing with snakes, particularly here in Australia. The snakes are gonna see you as the potential threat. They're gonna see you as the potential predator. So that's advantage us because it means the snake wants to do what it does best, which is hide from you or move away from you. In Australia, the majority of snake bites that occur come from one of two things, people trying to catch the snake that bit them or people trying to kill the snake that bit them. Don't do those two things and you reduce your chances of being bitten by a snake dramatically. If you're lucky enough to come across a snake out in the bush or a man in the backyard, don't go near it. Just look at it from a distance and walk in the other direction. Never ever try and approach any type of snake, whether it's a python or any particular species that we might find in this beautiful country of ours. But I just want to bring her up nice and close so you can have a really good look. How cool is that? Might even give that camera a bit of a tongue flick potentially. You can see the tongue, the eyes, the nares at the front. So they're still smelling through their nares, but also again, picking up scent particles using that tongue. And when the snake does want to move, she can do so quite quickly. Uh, but typically she's a very relaxed, quiet individual to work with. All right, Dan, do you want to do some questions? Questions? Yeah, for sure. All I right. might get Brandon in here for a second to give me a hand so I can focus on the questions. You can move that around that way for me, Brando. Thanks, mate. Go for it, Caitlin. 
All right, can reticulated pythons climb trees? Yes, definitely. Uh, they're very arboreal. Uh, all the reticulated pythons I've ever seen in the wild have all been uh, hanging over in the mangroves. Once they're this large though, obviously a lot more work has to go into climbing a tree wall. You can see how fast it's moving now. She is on the move. <laughs> uh, so yes, they are semi-arboreal, particularly when they're young. Uh, when you see them up in the mangroves or hanging up in a low-lying branch, they're a beautiful snake to see, uh, particularly when the light starts to hit them and you see that iridescent shine that you see down the snake's body. Uh, there's some people who miss it at the start, but how long is she? Uh, 6.2 metres long and five, no, 62 kilos, sorry, and 55 and a half kilos. So she's 5.5 metres, metres long and 62 and a half kilos. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. Uh, thank you. I got there in the end. <laughs> um, are they venomous? No. So this particular snake is a python. Pythons don't have fangs. Pythons don't have venom glands. They have lots of teeth. They're sharp, needle-like, recurved teeth. They're designed to hold on to a prey item. So rather than subduing an animal or subjugation of an animal using venom, they rely on their teeth and those extremely strong muscles to take down larger prey items. So yeah, they're not venomous. No pythons are venomous. Uh, we have lots of non-venomous snake species here in Australia, uh, but this particular Asian species, again, is a python. You'll never have a venomous python species. What kind of food would uh, an individual this size eat? Any small to medium sized mammal. So as I said before, uh, here at the park, we typically feed monster anywhere between a three and five kilo goat. And she'll get that feed every two to three months. She'll digest it over about 11 to 14 days. Uh, and usually what happens, she'll eat a really large goat. Uh, and then at the other end, it'll come out the other side and I'll make Brandon clean it up. Uh, can they swim in the water? Snakes are excellent swimmers. You think of sea snakes in particular, the way they move, even the way their tails are designed, that paddle-shaped tail. But yes, reticulated pythons can swim. The majority of snakes are amazing swimmers. That sinuous body moving through the water. You can see how perfectly they adapted. You know, no limbs. Really easy to move through the water. How old is Monster? Monster is 15 years old. So reticulated pythons in captivity, you may be looking at 35 years. So we might be looking after Monster for another 20 years, which is pretty exciting. And by that time, who knows, she might be topping the scales at 80 kilos, might get a little bit longer. All right, last question. Um, what is the biggest reticulated python that you've ever heard of? The biggest was about 150 kilograms. Uh, and with a tick over eight and a half meters long. That is a massive, massive snake. I don't think Monster will go quite as, quite as big as that, even here at Cap Captivity with us at the Reptile Park. But yeah, imagine seeing a snake literally twice, almost three times as big as Monster. It'd be pretty amazing. Even though I've struggled to remember how, much, how heavy she is and how long she is. Um, yeah, imagine seeing a snake three times as long and three times as heavy as Monster. All right, yeah, we might wrap it up there. Thanks so much. We'll see everyone later. Thanks, guys. Catch you next time. Cheers.